Hello and welcome. Thank you for coming very much. We appreciate everybody being here on a beautiful Friday morning. If I could get everyone's attention. Uh, my name's Tom Hiles and I'm Vice Chancellor for University Advancement and it's my real pleasure to uh, welcome everyone today for a very special announcement. Um, wanted to introduce uh, the dais uh, this morning and uh, tell you about how this will work. Uh, first, um, Chancellor Lofton will be uh, next, and he will be making our uh, announcement. Uh, dean O'Brien, uh, the Dean of the College of Arts and Science, will then be next with a response on behalf of the college. And then uh, we will uh, have our guests of honor, uh, Mr. Rex Singfield and Dr. Jeannie Singfield, who will, and Jeannie will represent and, and speak on behalf of the family. Um, Rex and Jeannie were co-founders of Dimensional Fund Advisors in California, and I just wanted to mention while we, we consider them uh, uh, basically honorary alums, uh, they do have two of, uh, two of their three children are Mizzou alums. I got a chance to visit with them a little bit last night at our dinner. Um, their children, Luke, Randy, and Katie, and Randy and Katie are alums. Uh, Randy's a BA theater major from 2001, and is and Katie, their daughter, is a 2003 um, BA, but she also got her master's degree in 2007, so we're very proud to have them as graduates. Um, before we get started, I do want to acknowledge our campaign cabinet who are here today. Um, Jeannie is a part of that national campaign cabinet. So I would, uh, first of all, like to uh, introduce the tri-chairs of our campaign. Um, Jose Gutierrez, Kathy Allen, and Richard Miller, would you please stand and be recognized for your support of the university? <laughs> and of course, we welcome all of our national campaign uh, cabinet members as well and, and all of our volunteers. As part of today's celebration, we'll be watching a video of some future plans for our beautiful campus, and then also, after that, hearing a performance by our MU String Quartet. So with no further ado, let me introduce our Chancellor, R. Bowen Lofton. It's a great day at Mizzou. Truly a great day. Uh, not only do we have a wonderful thing to say today, look outside. The weather is beautiful, perfect day for us to talk about something very special. All of us here share something. We could talk about many things we share, but I can assure you that everyone shares an appreciation for and a love for music. I can't play music, I can't create music but I can certainly enjoy it. And uh, I've done that for my entire life. Uh, we were talking last night that uh, going back as far as you can go in recorded history, we know humans have composed and played music. They built instruments. They've explored. And it's enriched us all. So we're here today to talk about the future of music at Mizzou. I'm glad to see uh, Julia Gaines here in the front row with many of our students as well from the college and School of Music. Uh, this is a moment in time which I truly appreciate. Gift announcements like this come along every now and then, and this one's so special for so many reasons. Uh, the givers, the recipients, the motivation, the vision are all very special. I'm going to say a few things about that. Uh, those of you in the music program here at Mizzou know that your facilities have a little bit, uh, shall we say, leave a bit to be desired. Uh, they're, they're, they're scattered, they're scattered, and uh, they're, they're not places I'm very proud of in terms of placing our students and our faculty and our staff in those facilities. So we've, we've struggled since I arrived here and long before about how we can deal appropriately with an extraordinary resource for this university, for Missouri, and for the world, our School of Music. Our givers today are also special people. Uh, this is not the first gift they've given. 
uh, and they've really been impactful already in so many ways. They began investing in this university and our students over 10 years ago. Jeannie in particular has a true passion for music. She actually performs it. Uh, I visit her home and I've seen, how many double basses do you have? Uh, <laughs> it's littered with double basses, okay. <laughs> I haven't seen them all yet, okay. And of course she plays in, in two orchestras herself and is first chair here in the Columbia Symphony Orchestra. She, a number, number of years ago, decided that her vision was that this place become, in her word, a mecca, a true center for musical composition. And in her own way, she set about deliberately getting from where we were to where we are today and will keep going down that pathway she has defined. So you can't have a successful program in composition without all the other pieces that must go with it. You need a pipeline of students, and she's made that happen personally. She's personally gone out and found students in a pre-college level to come here as, as students of composition. You need scholarships to make sure they can afford to be here. She's taken care of that. And now she's recognized also the need for space to enable this school to become everything it should be, not simply in composition, but well beyond that in terms of performance as well. So, it's my extraordinary pleasure to announce a gift to our School of Music for a new facility from Jeannie Rex Singfield in the amount of $10 million. I believe, you know, Brian, this is the largest gift of the arts in the history of the university. Is that correct? Okay. Another kudo. This gift will advance the School of Music along many pathways, but especially, of course, realizing Jeannie's vision of us being the center, not only of Missouri, but the nation and the world, ultimately, in terms of the study of and the preparation of those who do composition. Uh, that will set us apart, very much apart, from other universities of the highest quality. They found a meaningful way for them to advance their vision, first of all through students to recruit and, and provide access for them, but now to provide for them an extraordinary facility down the road that they can actually utilize day in and day out to, for their craft. So we're so excited about this particular moment, and I want to invite Dean O'Brien to come forward and share what this means in terms of the School of Music and the College of Arts and Sciences. Thank you, Chancellor Lofton. As many of us gather today to discuss the capital campaign, I think it's fitting to note that a gift of this magnitude can't come about without everyone's support. We need donors such as Gene and Rex, but we also need a lot of other kinds of leadership. When I became dean in 2006, I said my number one fundraising priority was construction of a new building for the School of Music and the renovation of the Fine Arts Building, which currently houses not only the School of Music, but the uh, departments of theater and art as well. Deans can raise a lot of money for a lot of projects, but there's no way that a $75 million project such as the one we're implementing here can go anywhere without the unwavering support of people above me, and I've been extremely fortunate that Chancellor Lofton has provided just that from day one. There's also another person who has played a significant role, although he's one of those unsung heroes, and that's our Vice Chancellor for Advancement, Tom Hiles. The one word I use to describe Tom is fearless. I'm pretty sure he would crawl into a cave full of hibernating bears to get a signature on a pledge card. <laughs> and, in, and in fact, I'm not so sure that Gene and Rex didn't agree to make their gift out of fear of Tom's endless stalking them across central Missouri. <laughs> Seriously though, thank you Tom. Now let's turn to what Gene and Rex's gift will allow us to do. As a bit of background, the Fine Arts Building was built in 1960 and as the Chancellor said, it's in terrible condition. It's not even close to being on par with the arts facilities at any other institution, and our faculty and students deserve a whole lot better. Our plan calls for constructing the new School of Music building, 
and then moving the music faculty, which currently are spread across campus, out of the Fine Arts Building and into the new home. We then will move art and theater faculty out of the Fine Arts Building, completely renovate it, and then move them back in. So it's a dual, dual project. But here, better than my talking about the project, let's take a quick peek at a video we created. I think you'll love it. Students and faculty of art, music, and theater have many options when choosing a place to study and teach. In order for MU to continue to recruit and retain the best, we must improve and expand our facilities. This development plan shows the next chapter for the arts at Mizzou. The Fine Arts Building will house the departments of art and theater, and its renovation will significantly improve the look of a primary point of entry to campus. The new School of Music will occupy a prominent location on the edge of campus on the corner of Hitt Street and University Avenue. The goal of the new building is to consolidate the school's functions into a single location to improve education experiences and collaborative opportunities for students and faculty. Plans for the expansion and renovation of the Fine Arts Building address the growing needs of an increased enrollment. The basement will house art class labs, theater prop storage, and mechanical spaces. It will include large, well-lit, and well-ventilated spaces that will accommodate the needs for two fiber studios, as well as two-dimensional design classes and studios for six fiber graduate students. The first floor will focus on student and public spaces for theater productions and art exhibitions, as well as classrooms and administrative offices. Photography students will enjoy a Macintosh digital lab, a processing room, a dark room, a shooting studio, and equipment storage. Down the hall will be two large ceramic studios with electric and gas kilns, multiple pottery wheels, a glaze room, and outdoor ceramics exhibition space. On the theater side of the building, one performance studio will include equipment to teach acting for the camera, and the other will have a wall of mirrors to teach dance and movement. The scene shop will serve as a classroom and a costume workshop for student productions. Next door, the Rheinsberger Theater will be refurbished and will seat 278 people in a traditional proscenium. The second floor of the Fine Arts Building will include classrooms, offices, and studios. Graphic design students will enjoy two spacious computer labs and will have access to media hardware, plotters, printing, and scanning peripherals. The proposed new School of Music's location will maintain the academic connection to campus and to other fine arts programs and will also be easily accessible to the public. The basement will be dedicated to small and medium-sized rehearsal rooms, labs, graduate student work areas, and a percussion suite. Six dedicated percussion practice rooms with 15-foot ceilings and a percussion faculty studio will be housed here. Composition students will enjoy new teaching labs with thick walls to minimize sound leakage from the rehearsal rooms. The 750 square foot jazz combo rehearsal room will be large enough to accommodate music stands and instruments, and the walls will have absorber and diffuser panels that will affect sound quality and acoustics. The first floor will include spaces that receive heavy foot traffic, two large band and orchestra rehearsal rooms, and one choral and opera rehearsal room will be configured to enhance learning and teaching. All will have sound lock entrances to ensure sound isolation, storage areas, a constant humidity level, and flexible spaces to allow for changes in the curriculum. The proposed new recital hall will increase its number of seats to 410. It will have an improved stage for solo recitals and chamber performances, as well as dressing rooms, instrument storage, and an opera shop. The second floor is dedicated to classrooms, faculty studios, and balcony seating to the recital hall. The third and fourth floors will be used for offices and instructional space for individuals or small groups. 
The plans for these two buildings were designed to provide improved space for MU's performing arts students and faculty, while respecting the investment of those involved by keeping costs low. We are excited about these plans and hope you are too. And one thing I will point out, because she'll, she'll nail us far when she gets up here, is it, it, it doesn't show it, but it will have a rooftop venue. That's one of the things that Jean is really insistent on, and I think she's absolutely right. So anyway, in closing, thank you, Jean and Rex, for sharing your passion with us. This gift will help build so much more than a new structure. It will impact future generations by enhancing the education and performance of music at MU for decades. Ladies and gentlemen, Jean Singfield. Years ago, I made the mistake of giving a little bit of money to Brady Deaton. So he, uh, and he came back and said, well, what should we do with it? And he had some ideas, and so we talked, and we came up with this idea of having a K-12 competition for composers. What could it harm, right? And uh, raise your hand if you won one of those years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then we had a high school summer camp for composers. So how many of you went to the high school summer camp? <laughs> and then we had, uh, then the students came, you, you know, who were helping me on those things, and they said, what about us? So, okay, so we upped it a little bit and had our uh, Mizzou New Music Initiative after talking to about 100 people. We realized that not only we needed scholarships, we needed ensembles our own ensemble. Raise your hand if you're in the ensemble, huh? <laughs> there we go. And then we also needed, besides our Sinkfield Prize, which is an annual uh, prize to be able to write for full orchestra, and how many of you have won that one? Some of you are here. Nobody's here that won that one? Oh, there, I'm, oh, there they are, Jose. Who's, who else is back there? <laughs> oh, there, I, I see them. They're way, okay, I see them. You're all in the back, thank you. <laughs> Okay, and then we uh, started an International Composer Festival. And for those of you who aren't familiar with that, it happens in the summer, and, and it takes, a, it's an open competition. We actually didn't think about it. We were in such a hurry to put it out when we started that we didn't put any constraints. We didn't put age constraints. We didn't put nationality constraints. So it was open. We figured we'd get, you know, college-ish, early grad school students. No. <laughs> We got students, uh, we got young faculty, we got uh, emerging composers from all over the world, and so we get about 250 applicants for eight openings. We get first class composers to come in, a first class thing, so we're making this place a mecca for musical composition. But the whole process doesn't just work with composers. To make this work, I need musicians, I need audiences, I need concerts, okay? And so the new building 
is to be able to expand not only the comp you know not only just composition but all music and to do that we are going to need a lot of help and i've had a lot of help over the years help from the faculty at the department of music people i've suckered into being I, I see a couple out there I've suckered into performing solos on different instruments. You can raise your hand. I see a couple of you out there, yeah. <laughs> and the, uh, and it's, it's complicated because when we compose, it gets people excited about music and they like all music. So it expands the entire music program. Now I obviously give a lot of money and I come in occasionally and I have lots of crazy ideas, you know, that People go, ah, oh, but they do them anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, we have a sound of art in St. Louis where we com match composers, we compose at the Sheldon, we run all over and do sort of crazy sort of stuff. But I do want to point out the, the people that have, happened, that have really helped. The number one are, are the kids, the composers, and the musicians. At the uh, department, the faculty have been great. We have these little $500 grants where they get get to have their ensembles compete. And then uh, the major people who've done most of the work, uh, uh, Billy Lackey does the managing, what, the work that no one else sort of really wants to do to make sure that programs are there and things actually happen. And then the two people who've been, the primary people on here is, is Tom McKenney, professor of composition, and uh, Dr. Stefan Freund who is actually out performing his music in South Korea. So what can we do? So I think what we're gonna go here is we're, we're gonna make Missouri a mecca for musical composition. The biggest player is gonna come out of here, out of Columbia, and, we're, and by having the new building, which I hope all of you will start giving your money, is gonna come out of here. And I don't think there's any other place in the world would let, which would let a crazy lady like me come in and do all these crazy things and come up with where we're going here. So thank you very much. So as we transition, we thought uh, no better way than to demonstrate uh, this great opportunity to celebrate this gift than to present some music. But before we do that, before I have our students close our program, I do want to acknowledge two other people. I know I had Richard Miller stand up a minute ago, but I would ask Richard Miller and Ann Kinder to stand up real quickly. Ann Kinder in from Houston. Ann, would you, I know you don't like to, but please stand. These are two individuals who've also supported our program with leadership gifts as well. So would you like to say anything about our students or we should just let them perform? I think the composer, come on, can come up and say. Please, please, come on. tell us a little bit about what we're gonna hear. Gotta understand, it, it just comes out of their head. <laughs> Hello, uh, I'm Erin Herschler. I'm one of uh, Jean's composition students here, and um, the piece you're about to hear today, it's, it's been a lot of places at this point. I wrote it about a year and a half ago, spent a lot of time on it, you know, tried to make sure it was very polished, and, you know, it's been performed around MU. The dancers over at Stevens College did a performance of ballet dancing to this piece in the fall. That was so exciting. Um, it won first place at the Webster University Young Composers Composition competition this last year and so yeah I hope you enjoy it get a little sample of the good things that Jean is doing here thank you Thank you. 
Thank you so much. That was beautiful. So as we wrap up our program, I'll uh, alert the media that we will st we're not going to take questions now, but we will stay around for questions. And please join me one more time in thanking our leadership donors, Jeannie and Rex Singfield.